Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast, episode 809 on this 2nd of February 2022, as we discuss the world of sports uh, and pop culture. Uh, but as always, on Wednesdays, we do our NFL show. And of course, we have a lot, but I mean a lot to talk about uh, here on this Wednesday night, as always, I'm joined by the by one Robert Sapp. How you doing, Mr. Sapp? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I am good. A lot to get into. Uh, normally, I just saw. it. Sorry, I'm just the re- I'm so distracted because I, I'm just seeing something that uh, Buffalo's offensive coordinator is going to be an ex Carolina. Anyways, I, no, there's no, so much. No, yes, yeah, hey, listen, the off season like, you have. You, you are Bills 365, so I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get yeah. it. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, what? It's not, that's not who I expected. Yeah, we all in the weeds in our team. You, you guys got a new name? Yeah, let's go on. Let's get into it. All right, right. my focus. Yes. Normally, we would, we would let off the program with who won the week, but certain times, sometimes news that, yep. breaks, okay. that breaks in the NFL supersedes the actual games and, and even Tom Brady's retirement. So this is how big yeah. the news was. Um, we're going to get into Brian Flores, of course, following a class action suit against the NFL. Um, this was a 58-page suit, uh, um, lawsuit, excuse me. Uh, the ex-Miami co- Dolphin coach, who, of course, coached three years for three years, had two winning season. seasons, was dismissed by Stephen Ross, uh, despite, like I said, despite finishing the season at 8-1. and one, um, some of the now again, there were a number of, of 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 things that he was talked about in this lawsuit, and things that he's talked about on on television in regards to it. In regards to this, these are just some of the main main things um that I took away from it. Of course, you have um, of course he's suing the NFL for uh trying to sue the NFL for uh, suing the NFL for racism or for racism. And racist practices that they've had, you know, basically for the since the beginning of time. Yeah. Um, that's certainly nothing new, especially against uh against uh African American coaches, um, and players in general. To be honest with you, we're gonna go back to the his, you know, to the back in the day day in regards to when there was time when there were no black players on teams. Um, but the main things that came out of this lawsuit were the Belichick the Belichick text. Um, if you haven't heard. Uh, Bill Belichick, of course, coach of New England Patriots, and who who uh, Flores was form formerly worked uh, under as the defensive coordinator on so on 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 three of those Super Bowl teams, and in the last you know six years, he coordinated that defense that shut down the Rams and held them to three points, and that's how he got the uh, Miami job. Uh, Belichick sent him a text accidentally, thinking that he was Brian the ball day ball. Who was formerly the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills, and of course, the ball was hired by New York Giants. He sends the text uh, on a Monday. Uh, Flores sees the text and basically says, "Hey, you know, you sure, you sure you got the wrong? You sure you got the right Brian?" And then Belichick checks himself, like, "Oh, damn, I fucked this up. Uh, you know, my bad. Basically, my bad." And did his initials BB, and at that point, of course. Uh, Flores knew having with that text being sent on a Monday, the interview being on a Thursday, he knew going to that interview that there was no chance that he was going to get that job. Of course, he was you know a victim of the the Rooney Rule that has been in uh, in place since two thousand two, which has not done has done next to nothing as far as advancement as far as head coaching uh, positions. Uh, so you had that going. You had the Broncos interview in which he alleged that Elway and another uh, executive of, of Denver, of Denver Broncos, came in drunk an hour late. Uh, of course, they they vehemently deny that. The Broncos put out a statement today, and Stephen Ross, the owner of the Miami Dolphins, who allegedly paid Flores a hundred thousand dollars a game, or offered to pay Flores a hundred thousand dollars a game to lose games. Back in that 2019 season, of course, if you remember, that was the season where Joe Burrow was going to be the number one pick. 
He wanted him to be. He wanted. They wanted to get Burrow in the 2020 draft. Flores refused to lose games. He walked off the yacht. Matter of fact, he also Ross. He, he also accuses Ross of having him wanting him to illegally recruit a a prominent quarterback. And there was a meeting that Ross has set up with that prominent quarterback, in which Flores, as soon as Flores came up to came up came on a yacht on a yacht, Flores saw saw the guy and immediately left that meeting. Um, I so, might need to be be uh, get some security around him. So he's giving up all the secrets. Yeah, it, it's, 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 ooh, he, he's giving up all lot. the dirty yeah, feelings of the NFL. It that, is, that they know they don't want the public to know. It's it's a lot. Um, yeah. So here, here's true. the thing. Um, I was when I like when I first heard about this, it was like happening fast. Like stuff. This I was like, okay. When I first heard my immediate thoughts when I first heard about this, I was on my way to on my way to work. Saw it, you know, checking just the ESPN app, uh, which I you know tend to do time to time. And I see this, read this story, and, and my immediate thought, first immediate thought, was like, "Yep, he's done. He, his career in, in coaching is over." Um, and then I start, you know, deep diving, and and immediately, and thank goodness, I you know, I follow, uh, because they were right on top of this, like immediately, Dan Lebertard and, and company in terms of his show and what have you. And Lebertard made a great point. He had. He had uh, Howard Bryant and an attorney on. It was just uh, like that's that's the type of reporting that you love to hear from because it wasn't no ESPN connections, none of that. Because that you know he and he mentioned his Levitar had mentioned this before. I couldn't do this type of uh, reporting in at ESPN from you know with a story like this because of the, the, the power of the NFL. Uh, so I immediately went to that you know listened to that. The attorney broke some stuff down. Levitar, Howard Bryant gave some, you know, gave their thoughts on that, and more things started coming out. And you know, I thought about like, damn, like this is a guy who, coming out of, you know, being fired, I was like, first I was, you know, we were surprised, and it's always a surprise every time the co- this coaching cycle when somebody gets when when it's at least going to be one surprise, one or two surprises that in terms of either resignation or firing. He was the he was the surprise fire, uh, Sean, Sean Payton being the surprise resi, re, uh, resignation. But we just knew that he would basically be able to, or I thought that he would basically be able, be able to pick his job, like he would be turning down people. Not the case, <laughs> not the case. As you know, he's filing his lawsuit against the Bears, Giants, and Broncos, and again, and really against all the twenty nine other teams as well. He wants us to be one entire class action shoot and wants to get everybody involved from that standpoint but um i was kind of surprised from that standpoint i'm like thinking to myself so he went from being one of the hottest candidates to this and it was like okay like what happened like they had like it, like, it just can't it couldn't be it just this just couldn't be that like what how do we get to this place and then when you hear stuff about the owner with the, you know, paying to lose the games and the bell check checks and this kind of like this. So it's kind of this was kind of like a build up to a point to where he just basically was like, you know, you know what? Fuck this. I know there are other jobs that are still available, um, but you know what? I'm probably not going to get those anyway, the way it's going. Um, this this needs to happen. Um, I got some other thoughts. But what are, what are your initial thoughts when all this when, when all this came about? Yeah. So, I mean, like my, my first thought was he'll never work in the NFL again. And my second thought was, I hope he has hard proof for everything that he's going to say, because the reality of the situation is he's one person going up against a billion, a multi-billion dollar entity. Um, Their resources are long, way longer than any one person outside of, you know, Bill Gates and all of them, um, uh, Warren Buffett and all of them. Um, so, uh, so he he has the toughest of tough roads to to climb. And so, um, my third thought was, I hope he's at peace with his decision. Because if you're at peace with the decision, then it's fine. Because what all you're trying to do is illuminate the truth. Um, if 
you're not at peace with your decision and you want another job, this is going to be a really tough time for him. This is going to be a really tough time for him because there's no way he's getting another job in the NFL. And as long as he's okay with that, then all of this makes 100% um, uh, 100% sense. Everybody's going to deny everything that he says. Absolutely. Everybody's going to deny it. So, um, you know, without without the hard proof for each of the allegations, it's going to be a challenge for him to come out of this and look like the like the win. It sounds like he's going more scorched earth, which is what it is. If he can, if he, it's kind of like how you know you play a game against a more talented team, and you just muddy up the game to try to give yourself yep. a chance. Yep. So he's just muddying up the NFL right now, trying just just muddying up the NFL, and that's good enough for him. Then then. Honestly, he'll probably come out this winter. If he's if 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 it's just like you know what, I just want to stick it to my former employer for a little bit. Uh, then then he's gonna come out a winner on this because they look bad. They look bad right now. Um, with that being with that being said, uh, I my hope then fourth my hope is even though he won't ever get a job again, that through these actions. And through some investigation and public pressure and yada yada, you know how all that goes. Right. That maybe there's a shift in some of the practices. But let me tell you, I'm not holding my breath. No. Um, first of all, I don't think that there. I I I say this to be honest, which I don't think, based off again the history of the NFL, not holding my breath that there's going to be a shift in practices. Yeah. Um, billion dollar owners don't like to be told are not going to be told what to do but here here's the thing um i am i have all in the world i have all the respect in the world for what byron forrest is trying to accomplish and for the reasons that he's doing it this is a complete to me selfless act you're talking about a situation and everything that i've read and heard here in the interviews i think he understands that he will not coach it another day uh, as a head coach in the NFL, I think I, I, I generally think I, I generally think he gets to not understand that. I generally think he gets that from that standpoint. Yeah. Um. Anybody that is willing to sacrifice their livelihood, their dream, their lifelong dream for the perceived greater good, I have nothing but admiration for. I have nothing but admiration for. You know, even with Colin Kaepernick, of course, um, and even more so Brian Flores, because getting a head coaching job in the NFL or any sport is like you're talking about these, you know, these are very, very special jobs. And these are very these are once in a lifetime jobs. It trying to get a head coaching job in any sport. I mean, there are years and years that you don't hear about guys and then you they hit 40 and 50 50 and 55 and it's like oh damn what, what have they been doing all these years they've been grinding and scraping and clawing and being this video guy this assistant that assistant so it is a long road for a lot of coaches not most or all let's be honest about that but there, especially for a black coach it is a long road to get a job like that to get a head coaching job even a coordinator, even a even a even a coordinator for that matter, offensive defensive. So for him to sacrifice this, uh, in essence, his career, there to me again, I have nothing but respect for it. I think that is something that, if he's willing, if he has a tough skin, if he's willing to go all the way, willing to fight the fight, and willing to like you to your point, willing to risk it all, then so be it. Like, do what you gotta do. Um, th- nothing comes with disruption. Like, like status quo is not like. There's no perfect solution. Uh, the only thing that could really shake up the apple tree would be if the players just on Super Bowl Sunday was like, you know what, fuck this. The black players and was like, you know what, we're taking, we're not even playing unless some change happens, which is not going to happen. But that 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 would be the immediate, like, really shaking shit up at next level to where to get the owners like almost pissing in their pants from the standpoint that's not going to happen so i don't 
if those anybody who's criticizing Brian Flores' decision, I don't know what else do you want Brian Flores to do. Like litigation is the <laughs> would be the only means to get to have even a chance to get uh, something done or to uh, or to for it to be his next uh, his next move. Um, he's clearly past the point of I'm not going. I, like I can't in good conscience allow this not speak up and not say anything and not and and not use what use my platform as far as a former head coach not to try to do something or try to make a change i can't like there's no other move for him and you know the history of our country has told has taught us especially as african americans you know disruption um trying to get shit done we you like you got we got to take the like what the montgomery bus boycott uh operation bread basket and the civil rights that went ran for five years it has to be something that, to your point, is like scorched earth, and it has to be some, in a lot of cases, a form of violence. This is a form of violence. This is like, this is like intelligent, like litigation is intelligent violence in a sense when you go coming at somebody in the courts. So, I have like again, I have nothing but respect and admiration for it. Um, the question is, how many people, especially ex black black coaches, are going to come along with, or are, are, are going to be with him? Like it's, it's it's one thing to be on Twitter. We wish you, coach. We wish you, Coach Flores, and giving up the you know the thumbs up and all that other shit. Are you going? Are you willing to risk your like future uh, coaching endeavors, possibly if you're trying to get a job again? I, I want to see that. I know it's not going to happen. More than like it's not. It's not going to happen with the current guys who who are up for jobs, possibly like a Todd Bowles or Byron Leftwich or somebody like that. I don't. I just don't see it happening. And I'm not. Shit, I'm not by any means shitting on their character. But they're trying to get a job, like right yeah, now. Need, nah, money, families, yep, yeah, need all got, that. Like, and yeah. yeah, they 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 trying to eat now. So that's, that's a tough ask. Yes, that's a very tough ask. And like, like I said, listen. And Flores is asking that. Honestly. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not. No, he's definitely. definitely not. No, he's not. He's not. So, I, me personally, I would like to see the likes of somebody like a Marvin Lewis, or some of those older coaches. There's one guy. There's one guy I'm going to mention who I don't. I frankly, if I were Flores, I wouldn't want to see. We'll talk about him later on. But you know, you got a Marvin Lewis. I was looking at Jim, like Jim Caldwell. Like Jim Caldwell has every right to be. He should be at the first of the front of his line, considering the, the way he got shit on. Like I, 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 like it's even like I was looking at his, his record, and it's even more shocking now than. It's like, yo, this dude was 28 games over 500 with the Lions. <laughs> You're like, what? How do, you get, how do you get fired for having three winning seasons with the Lions and two playoff appearances? And they got rid of him. I'm like, really? Really? Yep. So. Sounds like the Lions. But that's been, you know, that's the NFL. That's like, it, you got one guy who, you have one black coach right now, and he's had never had a losing season. That's the bar. <laughs> like, that's, that's the bar. Uh, no room for error. So the question to me is, who will be on board with him from that state? How many allies will he have? Because in a situation like this, similar to Kaepernick, when you're or in any type situation where you're trying to move the needle or be like a revol- the the life of a, re- a revolutionary is is a lonely deal. That is not a is is nothing glamorous. Is 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 that is some grinded out. Everybody's gonna try to shit on your reputation, type work. It takes a different type of person to to do that type of to do that type of work, and it's not for everybody. I don't. Again, more people than not, more people than not are gonna be on the sidelines. Period. So again, I like I said, I don't blame him whatsoever for 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 the action that he's taken. Um, it's clearly something that was building up. And he got pushed to the limit, and it was like, you know what? Enough's enough here. Enough's enough. And again, it is a very selfless act. Um, amongst the like, he he has again besides the NFL billion dollar you know onslaught that he's going to have to face with the with the in terms of the lawyers, he's also going to if I were his team, he's going to have a he's going to have a challenge. Even though even with this week, like this week, he will have the headlines. Until Sunday, when uh, when Cincinnati boards to go to LA. After that, 
it's going to be all about the Super Bowl. So to me, if I'm his team, his agent, his people's around him, I am really doing, I'm like, I'm doing every interview possible. I'm doing, like, I'm really putting together stuff to keep this in the headlines as long as possible beyond, just beyond the the, the uh, legal lit- the litigation from that standpoint. So this will be again. This is this is something that will not go was not going away anytime soon. But you know, and you know this as long as, as well as I do in your history of watching the NFL. The NFL will be in pure deflection mode uh, come come later on this week, and especially next Super Bowl week. Do you think any black coaches will get a job coming out of this? Like, because you have like this. This is the very beginning of this, bro. There's no way we can even ultimately even remotely see where this is going to head. We got the very beginning of this. Who knows? Yep. So we'll see how again. This this something that's something will that will be uh, ongoing. Uh, we'll definitely, you know, we'll see we'll see what happens. Uh, getting back to the games that were on the field. Um, you had again another very competitive and, and you know not so much a classic weekend as you did the previous weekend, but there was there was no way that you were going to follow up last weekend, which was one of the best, if not the best ever. But you still had very calm down, calm down. This was a good weekend. This was a good weekend. No, it was good. It was good. It was good. Um, it was I very good. No, it was very good. No, it in terms Terrible. of narratives, in terms of what the direction of the what the league could be heading, it was no, it was you're right. It was it was. It was from it was from that standpoint. The potential is it was tremendous with the potential of what we may be did this be the beginning of and uh, very good weekend. Um, as far as who won the week, I don't I, like you know. All due respect to the Rams, I think you had to say the Cincinnati Bengals won the week. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I guess absolutely. I mean, like uh, the Rams very publicly and obviously went all in for this. So this is exactly what they were designed to do. Cincinnati wasn't designed to do this this year. I think the consensus around, or as close to consensus as you could get outside of Cincinnati um, in the surrounding area is that the Bengals were young and up and coming, but probably not ready yet. And as you said, to go into Kansas City and beat the Chiefs for a right to play for the Super Bowl you win the week. You get to win the week. That that there's there's very few things that's gonna trump that. Um, you know, like I said this to you. We talked after the games. Um, and I have never experienced an NFL playoff where I've been stunned by an outcome. This game actually broke me in terms of I had to readily admit I have no clue what's going on this season and I just have to enjoy the show because I got nothing for you. I got thoughts, but like, nah, I, I, there's, there was no way I thought that this would happen at all. Um, I knew the Chiefs, I don't even remember what I predicted, but in my head, I knew the Chiefs were going to win 45, 17, like that. I just didn't even consider this game was going to be close. It didn't even enter my mind. Um, so much so that I had scheduled a bunch of different appointments because I was like, all right, that I'll, I'll do all the stuff during the day and into the game a little bit. It'll be a blowout, so it won't be a big deal. I'll just go back and watch how they blew them out. And, of course, for the first two, uh, 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 one and change, um, you know, nothing was proving me wrong. Up and down the field, doing whatever they want. Perfect. Yep, it's going to be a blowout. I'll just kind of keep my eye on it. And then when I finally sat down, look at it, it was 21-21. I could not believe that. I could not believe it. I could not believe it. Um, and I know, I know. Week 17, same deal. I know, I know all the different things. I know, just didn't see it coming. Um, so uh, I say all that to say that, um, you know, this, this team – um, and that game, you talk about last week, and I'm glad everyone enjoyed it last week. I really am. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it last week. Last week sucked. Last week sucked. This week, I loved. I adored this week. I had so much fun watching that game um, and rewatching that game. 
Uh, and so, uh, so um, it was really impressive to see a young team take another team's best punch and then respond. Um, a lot of people just want a team to come out and dominate. And guess what? That's not how majority of NFL games are won. They're close. They're tight. You're down. You got to come back. All those things have to happen in a season, in a championship season. And so um, with that being said, uh, it was, you know, the game is four quarters. It was an impressive showing of not only um, fortitude, but then after that gamesmanship um, and knowledge of your and knowledge of your opponent. Um, Cincinnati checked all of the boxes, all the boxes. Me and you spoke offline last week um, about, oh wait, it might've been during the show, um, where we talked about the coaches and you put a terrifying thought in my, my head when we were talking about Sean Payton potentially being a Bengals head coach. Well, that's out the window because Zach Taylor, you can't let Zach Taylor's there. Zach Taylor's there. You can't break up what's going on. This is, this is different. This is new. This is a different type of energy. Um, and uh, you have to give them all of the respect in the world. This game and the Green Bay game stunned me. Um, and Cincinnati put the final nail in the coffin for my ability to have any confidence at picking the winner of this Super Bowl. Any. Yeah, I I was more stunned with this game than I was actually even the Green Bay game, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, you caught you were on San Francisco. Because I yes. Yeah, you all said I had. I didn't think. No, I didn't think San Francisco would beat Green Bay. Really quick, real. I had you beating the drum for San Francisco because I kept being like, "They're gonna lose. They're gonna lose." Um, And on this side, in my other ear was my brother. He's been on Cincinnati. He's been in my ear. Right. Cincinnati's on a hot streak. They're gonna win. I'm like, yeah, yeah, shut up. There's right. no way. <laughs> so both both ears, both of these things, I was like, nah, both of y'all are crazy in my head. You're talking crazy. And both of you are ultimately right. And it's just like, I don't get it. I don't get what's going on this season. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get how Jimmy Garoppolo can beat Aaron Rodgers. I truly don't get that. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. And this game was equally as shocking. Yeah, you know, I, I listened to a lot of Kansas City stuff. Yeah, they um, were hurt. They were, they were hurt. hurt. Ooh, they were uh, hurt. They were hurt. I drank in their pain very yeah, much. They, they, they very were hurt. hurt. Um, yeah, because they had all the words after that Buffalo game. Yeah. Ooh, they had all yeah. the words. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. for Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes could do no wrong at that point in time. No. He could do no, no wrong. Uh-oh. What a difference a week makes. Sorry. Yeah, so here, here's the thing. And, like, I expect fans to say this. You know, uh, I expect fans to be fans. Yeah. Like I heard a couple. You know, the radio show, uh, the, the radio. I guess the radio, the radio people were were, were way, especially the the Kansas City play by play people were were way more level headed. Um, they, you know, they gave Cincinnati credit. They uh said, you know, we need uh, another piece as far as offensively, and I was like, eh, you got. Which yeah. makes me laugh. Which I, makes me laugh. Comical. Get out of my okay, face. Sure. Get like, out of sure. my yeah, come on. Like really most teams in the league are rolling their eyes. Like yes. really. Yeah. Three yeah. Hall of Famers on offense. Yeah, not you have two you. Nuclear Sorry. Weapons on, yeah, nah, no. Yeah, yeah, boo hoo. Boo hoo no, for yeah, you. No. But um in the Hall of Fame coach, boo hoo. Right. Yeah. Greatest <laughs> offense of mine of a generation. Boo hoo. Boo hoo. But I heard no, I did no. I mean I did hear I I did hear the C word. I heard the C word. Now of course we choke. know that. Yeah, the yeah. Choke. 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 And I'm like and then you know, I rewatched the second half in yep. particular the the Kansas City possessions because I just wanted yep. to, I wanted to get a better sense on what happened. Yeah, and I'm gonna be honest with you, Cincinnati took that shit. That wasn't that's not a choke job. Their defensive coverages, they mixed up their coverages. They did a great job at disguising coverages, mixing up. Coverages. I'm gonna pause they you did. right there, bro. I'm they did because I see where you're going. I'm pausing you. Hold on, hold on, no, hold on. This one, I'm just going to say two things can be true at once. That's going to be my next right. argument. I think they, both arguments are true. They Here's what, here's what I said. It's not, I, I don't believe it's a choke. They, like I said, the coverages, 
they uh they just did a tremendous job in terms of like mixing them up. They did three man, four man. They they blitz when they rarely and they that matter of fact the the biggest play the second biggest play of the game the biggest play was of course what happened before the half that gave that with that kept them kept Cincinnati in the game and took points off the board for Kansas City. But the, the second biggest play that was the biggest play. The second biggest play was the uh. When the, the the hill the defensive lineman interception that came because of a blitz that that came because of a blitz that 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 Mahomes didn't see coming that that, that caught Mahomes off guard rushed the throw the guy made a great play. I, my point is like we can't sit up here and again we we toss that word aside way too often in sports. It's easy. It's an easy go to. I get it. Twenty one six uh, twenty. It's a, Sixteen point lead. Twenty one three. You're supposed to win a game. I'm not. I'm not denying that whatsoever. Twenty one three. You cannot lose a game. You're supposed to win. You're supposed to win the game. I. I absolutely get it. And if I were Kansas City Chief, I wouldn't be able to sleep for until next until the draft. Maybe until September. That's how, that's that's how bad this one this one was. And we'll talk more about this loss as a comparison to some of the others in in, in this run. But I can't sit up here and I, again I rewatched that because you can't see possessions. Without saying, or what happened in week a few weeks ago, one is an accident, two is a trend. We so Ten City has had ten possessions in two games against uh, Cincinnati. They have 195 yards in those possessions. They have 58 plays, 3.3 yards per play. So that, that like that says something to me. That, that that's telling me that adjustments clearly are being made, and they clearly have a beat as the game goes on along on Patrick Mahomes. And in that game, now I will say this, Mahomes did revert to, he reverted back to early season Mahomes, too much dancing, too much dancing in the pocket, going backwards, doing, you know, not being, he was very indecisive. Um, and again, made some bad reads, made some bad throws. I would not, get, I, I will not, that we, we he played one of the worst halves of his career, for that matter. Definitely the worst half he's ever played in a playoff game. Even when he was shut down in the first AFC Championship against Bill Belichick, he didn't. He wasn't making mistakes like that. That was just a matter of just that's that was his first conference championship game, and that's, it's Bill Belichick. And he figured, but he ended up figuring Belichick out, and Belichick couldn't stop him in the second half. Um, but in this game, Kansas, Cincinnati, what they did defensively was 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 ultra ultra impressive. I, I have to say it. I I I, I probably would have been with the fans on that first viewing, like, yeah, that kind of was a choke job. But after the second viewing, especially up there of, of all their plays offensively in the second half, nah, I can't go choke job. I can't. It's too it's too easy and too convenient. Um they should have won that game, absolutely, one hundred percent. But nah, Cincinnati took that shit. And that's the beauty of sports. Sometimes you take a punch, counter punch other team makes adjustments, and sometimes you take that shit, and they took that shit. No question in my mind. What, were, what are you going to say? Yeah, two things can be true at once. Everything yes. you said is 100% yeah. accurate, and they absolutely did choke as well. Um, And this is how they choke. Uh, they had an offensive game plan, and the offensive game plan was working during the second, second half. As you said, Cincinnati made the appropriate adjustments to their offensive game plan in the second half. Um. That then Kansas, Kansas City actually did counter. Mahomes said it himself in a press conference after the game about he's they they were specifically asking him about the play at the end of the half, but it's indicative of the whole entire game. He said, "I got greedy," and what that means is instead of taking the things that were available for him, he kept going for the home home run. When you're up by 11 when you're up by 11 and so um here's what i would say if you want to locate the choke job to two people then i'll be fine with it and the choke job to those two people are andy reed and patrick mahomes nobody wants to say it especially kansas city chiefs fans right. um uh, nobody wants to say it but it is absolutely true the Bengals took advantage of the andy reed we have all we've always known your brilliant game plan, and I loved it as well. Your brilliant game plan was essentially this. In the Buffalo Bills, we tried this, and they crushed us with this because they, they're they very focused on us. Hopefully, the Bengals now have their full unadulterated attention as well. Um, we tried this exact same game plan, except the only thing we didn't do 
was take away what was brilliant about what they did was they took away one rusher and put him put uh another defender in there so they just rushed three we just rushed four and had everybody back they just rushed three and had that extra one there and that seemed to gunk up enough of the offensive play for kansas city um where is it where where it's also a choke what, what i mean by by what i mean by it's a choke job on Andy Reid. two parts one is you just played them in week 17 there was very little difference in the defensive game plans that would play. I, I watched week 17 after I watched this game twice. So I get your off. I know every offensive possession you're talking about. Um, and then I walked, then I compared it with week 17 where Kansas city was also up by 11 and also lost the game by three. It, it played out amazingly similar. So that's the choke job. Um, you saw it and you still did nothing. Um, or you still couldn't, you still couldn't go, you still couldn't go and do anything. So there was nothing surprising. The reason why is, is Cincinnati took complete control of Reed's weakness. It was overconfidence, him and Mahomes. The weakness was, as we know, from being in Philadelphia and being for other things, the main complaint with Reed was he would never run the ball when it was no. I that's no, that's a tactical thing. I don't think that's no, 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 no. no. Don't look at the ball. Oh, my choke. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it wasn't tactical. I the start of my argument, real, is two things could be true at once. I'm not disregarding any of your tactical arguments. I'm pointing out the choke as well. The choke is. I know what's coming. I know what to do. And for whatever reason, I'm not going to do it in spite of the steamroll that is coming. With Mahomes, the choke specifically is, I see what they're doing. I know what they're doing. I'm just going to do my own thing anyway, despite the results I'm getting. Case in point, that very last possession in overtime. Throw the ball up, almost picked. Uh Uh-oh, I'm very lucky that doesn't happen. What do I do again? You know what? Let me throw a riskier pass in the double coverage on one of the shortest receivers, as fast as you know, one of the shortest receivers, and see what happens. That is Matthew Stafford. We can't say one thing about Matthew Stafford and then not put it on Matt. That was uh, a horrible throw. No, that was a horrible horrible throw. throw. Damn the awful throw. It was just inconceivable. There was no reason for it. No. No. So uh, that's what no. I'm saying. You're giving, you're giving up possessions for no reason. That is the very definition of a choke. Now, what we don't want to apply to the Kansas City Chiefs because we have so much respect for them is that they choked because the moment was too big for them. That's what we don't want to apply to them because they've been in big time moments and excelled. And I get that. But if this take off Kansas City put Dallas in that exact same situation real you would not be talking one thing about tactical anything you would be saying da, 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 everything like that I'm saying that what was presented in front of us it makes no sense that they did not do the things to counteract what the Bengals were doing you simply run the ball against a three-man line how do I know that they know how to do it because I saw them do this to us two times in a row when we refused to and only rush for last year. They know what to do. He just didn't do it. Why didn't he do it? Because they thought they could get away with just passing instead of the uh, instead of the evidence in front. And if I were to also add my own thing, when the game got tight because of week 17, they got tighter. And it, that's the definition of choking. Why did Mahomes run around over and over, back and back? And why did he do that? Because he was scared to throw an interception. Yeah, yeah. All right, listen. So two things can be true at once. The tactical brilliance of the Bengals, absolutely. Kansas City absolutely choked, too. You can't give that. You can't win, lose that game. No. No, you got to know. No, that's inter- no, you it, it's inexcusable. You, you got the you got home field in a year. You no, worked in the front seat. No, it's not. it's inexcusable. You not have you have the better team. No, it's inexcusable. Oh, you can't. No, it's inexcusable to lose that game. 21, 21 three. No, uh, you can't. You're right. From that standpoint, you absolutely can't. But I again, I gotta lean towards more the, what the Bengals did versus what Kansas City didn't do in my in my opinion. I really do. I I, I definitely again. I understand all your points. I, it's just two things can be absolutely right. true at once. Right. Because 
all your arguments that you're saying, where was that when Peyton Man was losing to um, San Diego? You know, there's there's lots of historical things where we've applied that choke to to examples, but the tactical brilliance of the other team was ignored as well. Right. And so it's like, yep, two things need to happen. You can't well, have I a guess, choke without I guess, but I guess doing the, tactical things. I guess with with in regards to like you know when Peyton Manning and, and, and you know with Peyton Manning it was like up until up until the point that they won the Super Bowl. No, here's my there point. There was no per, there he was no the postseason best. success. Kansas City had the best. No, no, no. Same, that's why I brought San Diego, not New England. I'm not talking about New England. I'm talking about that San Diego loss. Um, oh yeah, uh, that, that, no, that was yeah, a no. See, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Here's the point. Our main point was they had the better team. They had home field and loss. Yep. You got what you did. Yep, can't do it. The game. They had the better team. They had home field advantage. They lost. Yeah, no, nah, you can't. You can't lose that game under any circumstances. No, nope. sure can't. Um, you know, we look at this four-year run they've had. Um, like I, the run. I, I don't think that good. I don't think there's any question that this is the worst in terms of their losses. Like, uh, you know, you go back to their first championship. Uh, appearance, they lose in New England. They lose to you know Belichick, Brady. You had the game once from if a guy doesn't jump off sides, losing overtime. Okay, Mahomes first go at it, even though it was at home. That still was New England. All right, cool. Come back next year, win the Super Bowl. Come back on San Francisco, down by ten in the fourth quarter. Last year, you get got blasted in the Super Bowl, but you had no offensive line. We know what happened. Go. We know what happened going into that game, as far as what the off the field, and we we neither one of us like different, especially going to playoff games, Super Bowl games. We've seen that that move before. So even that one, I could be like, all right, and doing and Tampa Bay was loaded with with talent. Tampa Bay probably had a deeper roster when you looked at it than they did. When ultimately, um, this year it was like no. This year it was laid out for them to no Tom Brady, no Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you're rolling going into the playoffs. Mahomes is playing as well as he's ever played. Uh, I just didn't see this one coming. And this year, this this one would hurt. If I were a Kansas City fan, this one would be the most painful one out of this four year run. I would feel like like you talk get back to that twenty that two hundred five. They hurt. They, they hurt. hurt. No, they hurt. definitely hurt. No, this one hurt. This one hurt. No, it had to. Hurt. They knew. I, mean, like, I knew they won. They knew they were going to the Super Bowl. Yes. They knew it. And, Not only did they knew they was going to the Super, they knew they was winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, this one. You hard. don't like. <laughs> it's hard enough to win championships. You don't. Yeah. You don't. You don't give away championships. You can't. Uh, you can't waste. The, yeah, I mean, waste, they, they all know. Everybody knows it. They know it. You can't you, waste the opportunity. Um, I mean, we can go back to a different sport. You know, twenty eleven Miami Heat. <laughs> they wasted that one. There's no way they should have lost that Dallas team. I, I'm going to this sport. You know the one I go to. Um, oh, Seattle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No, can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. No. And how many Super Bowls have they been since? None. Exactly. They have. They never. They never recovered from that loss. I mean, uh, you know, Atlanta. You do it. You just can't, can't do, do it. it. Atlanta. You they throw away these opportunities. Can't, they can't. Just, it's too many things that have to go right yes. in order for you to get here. The variables are too much. Yep. I mean, what are the chances Mahomes, Hill, and and um, Kelsey get through a season healthy? Yep. Right. Like it's that's, just that's, it yeah. Yep. Just is amazingly hard it yep. just is amazingly hard and when things break right for you you gotta take advantage of them yeah it, right, it. it was right there in front of them it was, it, it was right just right there home home playoff games um yeah no it, like, everything went your way all uh, right and, and the thing about it losing to a team that is on the come up you know, yeah. if it's one thing to lose to Buffalo in the AFC Championship, okay, Buffalo, you know, has been building. They we took they you know we they beat us we beat them last year. They've been coming at us. They're chipping at us. They've been chipping our hills for like two years now. You know, that's one thing. All right, but you lose to a team that basically came out of nowhere. That was four. That was four and twelve last year. Uh, with a bad offensive line, and we know they have talent. Yeah, they have talent. But hadn't took those steps of progression. That's a rough one. Like that's that, that that's that's that, that's a rough one. This is not. This is what makes the season so crazy. This is not the traditional trajectory of a team 
uh champion going to a champion going to a super bowl it's just not. unless they have that dude and they I'm have that starting dude. yes to get concerned that yeah. burrow might be very great like this you know yeah. like you know where i go this I, reeks of that 2001 new england team right like where it's just like what is even happening how are you here and who is this person doing all of this what and so it's just like it's, I, you listen, I, I wanna, I, listen i'm burrow could let me tell you something burrow could be that dude but it's still like they it's and we'll we, we can talk more about this we, we can kind of we can get to the next game and then we can talk more about this in terms of where we think this this uh talk about the shift uh let's get to um in, in terms of what's coming um but again one last thing about burrow now we'll, we'll talk more about burrow but and you mentioned this during our conversation I've seen many of games, playoff games, where a team's getting their ass kicked on the road, and the quarterback shits in his pants, and the next that that game goes from seventeen three uh, or fourteen three to twenty eight three, a thirty eight. Like that that game just gets the game just gets out of control with turnovers and bad decisions. Burrow, though, didn't do anything in the first half. Didn't do anything to win it so much in the first half, but more importantly, he did not do anything to lose it in that first half. There you go. And we know most of these games, most of these playoff games are not so much won, but lost. Yep. And that. Ask the kids, City Chiefs. Uh Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh Yeah, you love it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I do. I do love it. I do. And unashamed. They had so much mouth, real. They had so much. Oh, mouth. I'm sure. Yeah, they, I'm sure. no, no. They had so much mouth. They oh, did. they talking shit about the bills, like coming at the bills. Yes, yes. They had all the mouth. They oh, had wow. all the mouth. Nope. Yep. They did. They wow. had all the mouth. All of it. Yeah, well, listen. yeah, yeah. Come join us on the couch. Yep, join you. Yep, join you. Yeah, yep. 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 yep, we all here. Yeah, we are. Yep, yep. We all we're, here. We're one, together. one happy family. Yep. Watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> yep. So I'll get comfortable, yeah. All with all, Ooh, we'll, yeah. we'll dine on our hopes and dreams. Yep. <laughs> That's what we'll do. <laughs> Drink our tears together. Uh, yes. Um, is city. So we get to the NFC Championship game. Uh, this course, the Rams coming up big, uh, twenty to seventeen against the San Francisco 49ers. This they they snapped a six game losing streak to the nemesis, the San Francisco 49ers. Um, a a performance that the Rams had to dig deep. Um, I was so confident that for, the 49ers were going to win this game. I was almost too, too confident um, because I, I just the momentum, hot defense, not trusting you know Stafford all the way, even though he had played played extremely well through the first two games, and things were going the way I thought they could go through the first three quarters. Um, San Francisco. You know, they're up 17-7. Jimmy G is playing decently. Um, the Ram offense was, you know, was able to move the ball, but not able to finish drives. McVay making just asinine, you know, decisions with the timeouts and the challenges. They weren't doing dumb, you know, sometimes McVay gets into his own head uh, with some of these you know, I guess I, the the pressure of play calling and clock time management kind of gets to him because he is the play caller. But you know, seventeen seven was extremely confident the way this game was going. Um, but that damn Cooper Cup, um, he and again, San Francisco. Keep this also in mind too. San Francisco had about half the crowd. That was not a home game for the Rams. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen anything like this in my life in a championship game where it's basically 50 50 with the fan split. I like this is this is wild. Um, and those fans were loud on both sides. Get those fans, the, the fans in both the crowds were the MVPs. They got they caused a number a couple penalties in terms of delay games and off and false starts and what have you. Uh those that was a great crowd both ways. Um but the Rams, you gotta get the Rams all the credit in the world. Um, they did something that we didn't think that they were capable of doing, you know, about a month ago. 
um, that was physical play, and they matched and they matched the physicality, and then so with the San Francisco, and also having to dig deep and win a win a close win a game where they didn't score a lot of points. Like we, if I would have told you this game was gonna be twenty to seventeen, I would have said San Francisco winning this game. If, I, if you had told me that that was gonna be the score, uh, I would, I would say without question, San Francisco was winning that game. Um, but the Rams, um, in the fourth quarter, um, once the interception was dropped, and I want to say this about that interception that was dropped by uh by the safety, I know it was a big play. I understand it was a big play, but let's not let's not assume that San Francisco was going through the way that they the way that the Ram defense was playing and the way the San Francisco offense was trending. There's a more and more likely San Francisco was not going to score the football <laughs> even after that interception. Remember, it was when he threw that interception. It was seventeen fourteen, um, San Francisco. Um, so I I don't even think they. I I'll be honest with you, I don't think the Ram. I don't think San Francisco was going to score even if, even if the, if the the safety would have caught that and would have caught that interception. Now again, it gave what. But what happened is it gave the Rams that like, that extra lifeline, and after that. Stafford was dominant in the fourth quarter and did not look back uh, as he just, you know, went nuts with Cooper Cup, just catching passes all over the all over the place. Odell Beckham catching passes all over the place. They got enough of the run game with the twenty nine rushes, and Aaron Donald and Bob, Aaron Donald in particular just took over the game, especially in that late the second half of of, of the fourth quarter, and, and you know, just proving just just kind of just reminding you, I'm I'm still the best defensive player, regardless of what happens with the. The defensive player of the year. I'm still by far and away the best defensive player in football. Um, what are your thoughts on this? On this? On on this physical contest? Very physical contest. I'm, I'm glad you ended there because that's exactly who I want to start. Rams offense, whatever. I want to focus on the defense. Yeah. Um, the the like yes, but he doesn't give a damn about the defensive player of the year. Anything he wants the Super Bowl and he's playing like it. He's playing like the most dominant player on the field. Um, that wants a ring. And that's why I respect most most of all. And then make the play when the play was needed to make. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That is greatness in a nutshell. That's that's what is supposed to happen at this time of year. My favorite shot um, after watching the game the second time was when Aaron Donald had the whole defensive. Um, uh, a group there and in, in the broadcast they said I remember at the time they said um was uh you know he doesn't speak out a lot but when he speaks everybody listens right yep. um and so and so a lot of times there's lots of shots of that throughout the course of the season and everything like that absolutely and a lot of times it's cheesy it doesn't really change anything around and everything like that and again that's why it was so important that he was the one that made the play he not only talked to talk he walked to walk and that's why the players listened to to him now to your physical point the defense rose to match that challenge and that's what was unclear going into the playoffs at that point in time the defense was still very much finding their foot and, and definitely hadn't shown that level of aggression definitely hadn't shown that um, and so what I did say on the, on, to you, to my brother, to anybody who I was talking football with and on this show actually was that what I have always respected about the Rams, particularly as it's come to this time has been that they know this is their one and only shot and they're playing like it. Um, that's all I can expect from this team. Honestly, they know it's their last shot and they're playing playing like it. I needed to see Stafford play a clean game during this playoffs to even believe they had a shot. I saw that. So I believe that they had a that I believe that they had a shot. Um what I was dying to see, because I've also said this on this show, I am rooting for Aaron Donald to get a ring. I'm rooting for him to get a ring openly. Um he's the best he's been the best player in football for a while. Yeah. And the only thing, the reason why he can't get recognized like that is because he hasn't had that ring. Um and so uh so I'm I'm rooting for that. Um, uh, and with that being said, uh, I think that the level of aggression that they showed in this game should terrify the Cincinnati offensive line <laughs> forever until the game is over. Um, because 
that's 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 a mismatch. That's a mismatch. Um, in, in this game, as of right now, we'll see. We'll see what everybody schemes up. But um, my confidence level has risen tremendously because I saw Aaron Donald make that play when it was needed to be made, and then as they were walking off the field, pointing to his finger, saying he wants that ring. Yep. That's what you want. You won't see Jordan saying, I want that ring. You won't see yep. Kobe going, I want this. You want to see the best player saying, I reckon everything we say about the Chiefs, the opposite here, right? Nobody's getting greedy. Nobody's trying weird, crazy things because they want to be flashy and because they want to be stubborn to their officer. Everybody, everybody here, particularly on that defensive side of the ball, knows that this is it and we got to win this. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect, I respect so it. That, that I respect. I respect the Rams approach all year long. Like, go all in. Like, I right, like if you're gonna if you're gonna go for it, you don't know how many years Aaron Donald has at this level. You don't like you just don't know. It's the football become a year to year sport anyway. If you guys if you feel like you have a chance to win a Super Bowl, you gotta go all in. They brought in Stafford, feeling like they needed an upgrade over golf. Stafford um, had moments in the regular season, you know, that were shaky, especially down the stretch, but. You know, this is why you brought him in. Fourth quarter, down 17-7. Take us home from a standpoint. Bring us back, and make the you know make the necessary plays. To, uh, make the necessary plays. To, you know, to lead us through. And he did that in the fourth quarter. He got again. Your bet. The two best players. Not so much your two best players, but two of your best. Two of your stars. Donald Stafford rose to the occasion, and that's what. That, to your point, versus. You know, Kelsey dropping passes versus Tyreek Hill dropping passes versus Mahomes. Uh, were the polar opposites in in the second half of their game. The Rams stars rose um, to the occasion, um, and they deserve to win. Pure and simple. Um, in regards to the Forty ers they had a great run. Uh, we know Jimmy G is done in San Francisco. Um, More importantly, Jimmy G knows he's yeah, done. Yeah, Jimmy G knows. Yeah, Jimmy G knows he's done. Yeah, he, he's not even, it wasn't even. Like, There's nobody, was, nobody's even pretending. No, 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 not at all. Even the players, you know, hugging him after the game and, you know, kind of, you know, whatever, tweeting him, whatever, you know, trying to give him some, you know, it was defending him during, well, even before the game. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody knows. that That's like a foregone uh, conclusion. Um, they had a great run. Um, that team is that team is still talented. I again, I we'll see with Trey Lance. I don't know. Like we listen now. Listen, Shanahan is a is one of the best play cars and 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 quarterback coaches in the league. Period. He the man. He knows what he's doing from an offensive standpoint. And we've seen success stories of quarterbacks sitting for one year. We saw it after sitting for one year. We saw it after we saw it from uh, Mahomes. Yeah, you so, don't even have to go far. It's Mahomes. Yeah. Mahomes and Rodgers are the best examples. Yes, those in recent, recent memory, yes. I mean, Rodgers had three years. So, he Trey Lance didn't get a lot of burn, but he did He did sit for a year. Okay, isn't that, that so actually not, used to be how quarterbacks were developed. Yes, that used to be, yes, back in, like, way back when. Um, and, you know, they ready to turn over the leads to, to get him. Cool, we'll see how that works out. Um... I'll get on the Jimmy G stuff. I got some Jimmy G stuff later on. I'll, I'll get with, but you know, you look at the bottom line is they never forgave Jimmy G for what happened in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. They just, it just like they really thought, they really think that in this run they should, they should have, should have won that Super Bowl. They never forgave him ultimately for what happened in that game, uh, in that Super Bowl. That's to me what did even before this season, even. Again, you know, with the injuries, no. It came down to that game against Kansas City. They felt like he lost that game for them, and Kansas City shouldn't even been in a position to steal that game at the end. They never, he, they never forgave him as an organization, as a coaching staff for that particular game. Um, and Shanahan, you know, listen, Shanahan. <laughs> it is obvious when you watch how those games are called, how Shanahan calls the games that he doesn't trust Jimmy G. Like, it, like it, it's just, it is what it is. Being, and I'm not even a San Francisco fan. I'm just, as a NFL observer of just watching football and watching the 49ers play, um, he doesn't trust that quarterback. So, he's going to get his wish. He's going to be going next year. They'll trade off for some compensation. Um, and, you know, 
We'll see what happens. Uh, now, now, similar again. He's gonna be. He's in a similar position as as McVay. The difference is, you're going with a unknown versus a known. McVay said. McVay said, you know what? Golf is the problem. Give me, give me Stafford. We'll be in the Super Bowl. It paid off. They're in the Super Bowl. They got Stafford. Shanahan, sim- and again, very similar situations. Both have come knocking at the door with the Super Bowls. Both have been to Super Bowls. Both, I mean, McVay has been a little bit more successful. Uh, San Francisco has been up and down. Haven't had really consecutive years of winning. Um, but they both very good coaches. Both considered to be top offensive minds in this league. Um, and again, in a very similar situation that McVay was in last year. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, as far as McVay, listen, you gotta, you know, you gotta win the game. Period. This team was built to win the game. You gotta go out there and win the game. But McVay, what you can say, McVay, since he's gotten there, the team has been extremely, extremely consistent, to say the least. That team has been, that team is very well coached. Uh, they don't have like, you know, we I've seen years because I've seen, I've seen years where Atlanta would like win. 12 games and then next thing you know they're seven and nine and i've seen years where carolina is 13 and three and then they go to six and ten so it's something to be said about year in and year out consistency uh so you gotta give mcveigh credit from that standpoint but second super Bowl appearance you learn from the learn from the first you gotta go out there and win the game pure and simple and they know that they are they, they're all in they and they they know that so this will be again second super Bowl appearance in uh four years i had plenty of time to talk about that but that was a very Again, we knew it was going to be a good game. Uh, division rivals in a championship games are always special to me because uh, they both they and they that's those two, two teams, especially in state, those two teams hate each other. I mean, they hate each other uh, to a you know, and rightfully so. The Rams, and San Francisco, have been kicking their ass for basically the last two years. So um, you know, San, uh, Rams get their revenge at the perfect time, and we'll see uh, what transpires in the uh, Super Bowl. Biggest disappointments. I don't think there's any questions. The Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and again, we're not here to shit on their success over four years. We know four straight AFC championships is nothing to sneeze at, and two Super Bowl appearances, a Super Bowl win. But the bottom line is, you know, Mahomes has been regarded as the best quarterback in the sport over, the, over that time period. Andy Reid, one of the best top two coaches, and they only have they have one Super Bowl to show for it, and they've had two back-to-back losses in where they were got their doors blown off in the Super Bowl and they lose a home game against a team that was a 125 to 1 had 125 to 1 odds to win the Super Bowl before the season. So that is a, a that 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 is a they, loss that they got that. Oh, I saw that too. I'm like, oh man. Oh yeah somebody had oh my sweet goodness. Bet. Yeah that's a sweet bet if you made it. Oh that's a sweet bet. 125 Boy. to 1? I would have never been able to make it, but man, nope. if you made that one, yes, yep. that's good. That's yep. good money. Hey, you deserve it. If you made that oh, one, you, you that's deserve good money. it. Um, Jimmy G detractors. I, I'll say this and again. I've defended Jimmy G somewhat on this podcast. Um, Jimmy G has a great regular season record. He's four and uh, five and two in the playoffs, or four and two in the playoffs. Been to a Super Bowl, been to a couple conference championship games. I guess, I guess people who want to just knock Jimmy G. I guess I, I would have to ask, what are your expectations? Like I, I, I never known Jimmy G. Or anybody to think that Jimmy G. is an all-time quarterback, or I've never, I never, we never held him in that high of regard. Um, I think people got caught up a little bit with the narrative that he was just this bad quarterback and I'm like no he's actually not a bad quarterback I'm not saying he's now he's not somebody that's going to take you to the next level but you can actually win a lot of games with Jimmy G so I guess I guess I would have to ask again the detractors what were your what are your expectations what were your expectations what you know what are your thoughts and by the way I don't have any problem with them getting rid of Jimmy G and no problem with it. I, I totally understand it. You don't feel like this guy can take you to the next level. Cool. You better you you better get it right with the next guy. But again, I, I think I always find it hilarious when people jump on a narrative and then kind of take that narrative to an extreme that it shouldn't probably be taken. Uh, what are your thoughts? 
real. I could not disagree with you more than anything else in life on this one. My great hope for you is that Jimmy G becomes the quarterback for the commanders and you will truly learn. And I, <laughs> we will hear and you will know. Uh, we will hear and you will know why everybody's so irritated and annoyed for him. It doesn't even matter what we think. His team doesn't trust them and they showed it. And that's the, the most damning thing that can be said at your quarterback. They blamed them for that, that Super Bowl loss and they were absolutely right to blame them. We all saw it. We all saw it. And it was, it was, he was, he, that he was scared to win the game. He couldn't figure it out. And as a court, as a, as a top nine quarterback, that can't be a fault that you have. That's number one. Number two is you're doing a real good job of revisionist history here. But I remember the whole thing because he was the Patriots quarterback. And of course, you know, I pay attention to all Patriots things right there. After that four games, Jimmy G was the hottest free agent in the world. Yep. everybody had tremendously high expectations of him he he at that time ridiculously as we know because belichick rolled his eyes but literally the question was should you start jimmy g over tom brady so yep. don't give me this people didn't have high expectations they absolutely did he was the one that knocked those expectations down the reason why there's no expect there. You don't have those high expectations for him right now because he proved it over and over again. He is not up to the task. So yes, in a way you are right in this sense. If you are 100% okay with having an injury prone quarterback, mistake prone quarterback that can get you into the playoffs, but never get you um, past the big game then Jimmy G is your man. If you want something more, then you have to do more than Jimmy G. What I will also say about the uh, that Shanahan, like what is going on with this, is now Shanahan is on the hook for Trey Lance. He has his young 2.0 quarterback, uh, part of his new generation of quarterbacks got that, that can also move well outside the pocket and throw. And so that that is the mold, and that's what he saw that he needed to take that next step in his level um, and to level up. Um, so now it's prove it time for him. But in terms of Jimmy G, um, real nobody cares about Jimmy G. There's nothing <laughs> in the world that I'm less afraid of than Jimmy G. I will give you the physicality of the San Francisco offense, but I will not give you Jimmy G as a reason they did anything. The Washington Commanders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope the Commanders get him. Uh, no, I'm talking about the Washington, the Washington Commanders, the name. Yeah. This is what, so this is the two year wait. This is the, yeah, new, that's your the branding. Team. No, no, that's your football team. Not the name. That's your football team. <laughs> Root uh... for the Washington Commanders. You need to say that. <laughs> the Washington Commanders are my favorite football team. Those need to be words that, that come out your mouth. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Your owner's a hot mess, real. You know that, right? He is a hot mess. This is, this is literally, I have to take the lead on this one. Go this ahead. is literally, because we've, we've talked about this. This is the easiest layup in the history of layups. You put a, net, you put a citywide vote out. Right. Best right. name wins. The name could be corny. It could be corny as all, all hell, but at least the people bought into it because right. they voted for it. Yep. Then you do some type of fan celebration, hot, free hot dogs and beer, whatever. <laughs> Ice cream doesn't matter. And you unveil the name, everybody applauds, it goes home. Yeah, 50% don't like or let's say 30% don't like it, 40, 40% don't like it, 60%, whatever the thing is. This man managed Somehow, some way, D.C., this is Washington, D.C. We can't agree on anything about anything, anything. He got the whole entire city to hate one thing, which is this name. And then the lies on which this name came about, I'll let you expound on that. Your owner's a hot mess. I, I, don't, I don't even want to expound on that. I really Please don't. expound. No, expound. You have to. Let your listeners know. Don't do that. You spend a whole segment on um, whoever else. Spend that say put that same energy into your team. No, because I know I'm going to put the same energy. First of all, it's one of the 
worst names <laughs> in all that I've ever it's heard. So bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's literally no. It's I literally, can't believe it's, this is the name they came up with. It's literally it's so one bad. of the worst names I've ever heard in my how? life for how? any, for how? any how? sports team, any how? sports team, college, how? high school, whatever. It, Real, I said this sounds like a wreck flag football team name. Yes. <laughs> We have one of the most valuable <laughs> franchises in sports. And yeah, it's, it's no, like it sounds like a it's, yeah, a rec league foot, rec football league team. It's not. It sounds like a a, a fantasy team. Oh, like no, even worse. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Even worse. And, and like like this is like your um your uh fourth grade uh students fantasy football league, right? Like when nobody can come up with any type of creative names. Well, I'll be the uh the um commanders. Watch the commanders. Okay, little Billy, who's only 10 years old. That's a great name that you came up with. Not highly paid grown professionals that have workshopped this for a year. I'm done. <laughs> I'll let you keep going. Um, I'm so disgusted. With it, this. <laughs> so it, it's just like, I mean, again, I we I knew we knew that they were gonna fuck that they were gonna fuck this up. Right. Like, so that's ah, why that, this this doesn't even make sense. It it was no like we, we I mean again they, they, messing this up. They you have, couldn't play this worse. Yeah, no, you, you couldn't play this worse. And to again, the worst part of it is the two year wait. Like two years, sorry, excuse me. I, I took a year away from the, the workshopping and the thinking and the brain trust. And I'm like, this is what you wait two. This is two years, and the, yeah, this is your rebrand. Like, this is your rebrand. And again, it, it, I I understand what Nick fans go through. I understand what Clipper fans were, were going through. Like, when you have an owner that just cannot get out of his own way, it is, it is a feeling of just you just it's beyond hopelessness. It's like you can't get anything right it's not even on about the even the on the field product it goes beyond that you can't even get fan entertainment in the parking lot right you can't even get the field right as far as just the the grass you can't get a sprinkler system spraying people during the game and people splashing waterfalls like there you can't get anything right um and and now again, this is the latest, although <laughs> this is the latest added on to a laundry to a laundry list of things that cannot that they can't get right. And I I just like, it, like I said, there there are a gazillion names that you could have went with that would have been. It was not hard to to be an improvement from this name. It was like you said to your point. It was not this whole process. It was not a difficult process should have been a difficult process it really shouldn't have i mean they made this out to be it as if really they were trying to like cure cancer or crack, something like crack the nuclear code yes yeah exactly exactly the nuclear rubik's code like the rubik's cube or some shit it is not that hard um so yeah so when i saw it, i was like yeah you know what it, it this it doesn't surprise it, even even as this point as 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 not surprise as obviously I expected it to be horrible but even this was like word like really this is this like I I, I was even even more I don't know if I, how if I was more disappointed or surprised if not just both um even expecting the worst which I did like even if you expect the worst like it's 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 the worst thing when you expect something to be horrible and it turns out to be worse than what you expected. Like that, that's like, oh, come on, what, what, like, what are we doing here? Like, what, what are we doing with this? So I, you know, I can't call. I, I'll never call the name. I, you're Washington. You're Washington. You're DC. I, I can't. I cannot say that name out of my mouth during the season. I, I can't. I can't do it. I can't. You even better just leave it to football team. Just leave that. Like, I just, I can't do it with with this name. <laughs> like, what? so yeah. This is this is what you know. 
Yeah, I, 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 yeah. No, I yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you, 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 you did well. You did I well. No, I, I have you nothing. I have nothing else. Well. Um, you did. Hugh Jackson. So that was hard. I do. Hugh Jackson. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, so Hugh apparently, on the heels of you know the the Brian Flores' uh, lawsuit, Hugh Jackson comes out and says. Uh, that he was paid to lose um, when he was with Cincinnati. If you remember, he, those two years he was with Cincinnati, they were like they were one in thirty-one in two years, and then they fired him after like seven games in the third year. So three and uh, thirty-five, yeah. So three and thirty-six. Excuse me. So. <laughs> He was three in uh um three and thirty six, had an zero and sixteen season, one and fifteen, and again two and five. So three, three and thirty six. He claims that um during those seasons it was about they were trying to they promised him they were gonna be patient. It was about analytics. They had this. Innovative way that they were going about. <laughs> they were to... accumulating draft picks. They were mimicking the Sixers way. We were yeah, yeah, the process. Yeah, it was trust about, yeah, 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 very well. Very yeah. well. Yeah. Yep. It was the at the height was... of analytics. It was yes. It was the process. Um, they, the they, they, the the they were trying to mimic the 76ers Yep. Yeah. Yep. And what? Why? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. That, so... that, that, that has been that has been proven to be stupid. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. So. That's what was going on. Here, here's here's why Hugh Jackson is a disappointment. Unlike Brian Flores, Brian Flores is like, look, I'm not. You can't pay me enough to lose games. It's not happening. I know this team was horrible in 2019. He took over. Miami was one of the worst franchises in 2019 as far as from a talent standpoint, and that team ended up winning six games and finished strong at the end of that year. So he coached his ass off in that year. Um. And he wasn't going. He was. He was refused to lose games. He wasn't going. To, he wasn't going for that shit at all. Hugh Jackson, I'm sorry, Hugh. You took the money. Like I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear about their commitment to lose and and so on and so on. You took the money. That's the that's the bottom line. You you supported it in taking the money. You actually like you supported this culture. This. Analytics shit and you know our, our draft picks and all this bull and all this bullshit. You were right, you were right there with it. And to your point, a long time ago that you told me about the process, you like you know what? When the culture. when the process when the process is done, all these people are getting are going to be fired before that process is complete. Yep. And I would you I wish you could have gave Hugh that same advice because. You should have known better that there was no way <laughs> that you were gonna be able to survive this no many way. losses. No yeah, way. I don't care what they promised you. I don't care if they promised patience. I no, <laughs> it just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> like no, you were part of the experiment, and you paid the price. So I don't care. What, like at some point, your integrity has to matter. Like you are a head coach of a football team. Of a professional organization, I your job, sure your mentality is to it. win. Real quick, real. I want to make sure we keep in that same energy for Brett Brown, though. So don't like, like that feels really weird if we're talking about black men and we're holding him to one standard and we're not holding Brett Brown, the white man, to the same standard. Yes. Yeah. No. The exact same situation. No. It was no. No. It one hundred percent. No. One hundred. One hundred percent. No. One hundred percent. He subscribed to that. He signed off to it. Um, the difference is they gave him, they gave him more, you know, they, they, they actually allowed him to, you know, to stay in terms of Brett Brown. They gave him more, uh, they gave him more leeway in terms of, uh, more time for it to, to, to try to succeed. So he actually made, was able to survive until they made the playoffs. So no, he subscribed, but he, no, to your, to your point, he, sus- he subscribed to that, to that, to, to, uh, to all that shit, to the analytics. It's to the called graphics. losing on purpose. Purpose. Yes. This he subscribed to all that. Yes. Name. He, it's yes, called he, losing on he purpose. lost on purpose. Yes, we are he, not putting a competitive team on the, on field. the floor. No. It is not sports. That's no. not sports. That's not No, it's not sports. That's not. He subscribed to it one hundred percent. So yes, at one thousand percent, he was a part of that. He was not. A, I don't care what he said. I don't care 
with the spin they try to throw it. No, he he was he, he's the same, the same. He, he, him and Hugh Jackson are one the same, um, are one the same from that standpoint. But again, if you're Hugh Jackson, I'm sorry, I don't I have no sympathy for you from that standpoint. I just don't. Um, now I don't blame. What I don't blame, I, like, I understand that those jobs are few and far between for black coaches. So maybe you felt like if you if you if you leave it, you never get a job again. But I can't lose on purpose. I'm sorry. I'm mean, like, no, I can't. I can't do it. I can't not be a part of an organization that once that's trying to lose on purpose, especially as a football coach. Those losses go on your record. That is part of your record. The owner, like, you can lose all the games. The owner, you get fired. The owner still is rich, and the general manager more than likely will keep their job. You're going to be the fall guy. You're going to take the hit. And it goes on your record forever. Those losses, they don't, nobody says, hey, they were trying to lose, so they really don't count towards his record. No, 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 no. They stay on your record forever. So, I again, I don't have, like, I, I had, I don't feel sorry for you, Jackson. Uh, whatsoever. Uh, he's talked about supporting Brian Flores. Um, and if I were Brian Flores, I'd be like, I wouldn't maybe publicly say this, but I'd be saying to myself, eh, you, we, we not the same from that standpoint. I, you, I would, I, I fought against that, that culture. You, and but you embraced it. So that, so from that standpoint, we're not the same. So he goes under to me one of our uh, biggest disappointments for the week. What do you, you, know, you have any thoughts on extra thoughts on that? I do, I do. Go I ahead. mean, I, th- I think, uh, very, I think this is an indictment on the Browns organization. I think that's the yes, a thousand percent. But that's I no that's to, the, to your point. To your point, yeah. you have to know, and I don't mean to cut you off, but you have if you're Hugh Jackson, the Browns had been terrible, have been terrible forever. You, 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 you put any faith in their organization? You have to know what you're dealing with with the Browns. Real, here's what I'm going to say I believe. Your mistake here is you are holding NFL coaching job in a higher standard than the NFL coaches actually do. Um, a paycheck is a paycheck and they're making millions of dollars. So what you're essentially doing is you're saying to me, you want me to execute this vision. I'm in charge. You are my boss. You were telling me to execute this vision. You were paying me this much money. It is absolutely that simple. His bosses told him to do something. His bosses told him to do something. And he executed their vision and was paid for it. I get, listen, everybody got to make a, we all have choices to make. We His all have choices. His bosses told him to do something. They did tell him to do something, but he, all, here's the thing. Yes, you can lose all these games, but he also took the money for the bonus. He also took the bonus money for losing. He did not have to do that. Didn't have to do it. Bonuses were about metrics, and they were about metrics to keep. This is this is why it was so insidious what the Sixers did. I blame the Sixers for all this. So damn <laughs> Jack, damn the Cleveland Browns. This I'm I'm not I'm being dead serious, and you know I am. This was horrible. This was the ho- most horrible thing in this sports, and that's why I had to fail. I needed it to fail because this could not become a thing because the thing that made this insidious in the article that you read, you'll, you'll see it um, with this, were that the bonuses were designed around the metrics to keep the team young and to keep the team financially healthy and to, te- to keep the team draft worthy. The Sixers wrote the playbook on this and they developed it and then they sent it all over the place and he was speaking and making money, whoever his name was. I don't want to remember, say his name. I remember his name and say his name. And so the sales pitch of this was in order to keep your team from being, I mean, in order, uh, the, the idea, right, of course is we co- collect draft picks, we make this amazing draft and then we'll be back. But right. we'll be back in one spot, right? Bull bullshit. Uh, but, um, but, Ultimately, in order to do that and to not call it what it was, which is losing on purpose, which is yeah. fundamentally opposite of sports, which should be condemned and kicked out of any league. Instead of being able to call it what it was, they reconfigured and did the statistical analysis to keep the team um, without any competitive talent. And that is essentially what they were doing. They were incentivizing them to follow a specific guideline that would reduce 
the ability of the team to get talent. And so therefore you can never ever say in their minds, you can never say we're not trying to win because right. the players and the coaches and yada, yada, yada are trying to win. But the fact of the matter is you are not putting a competitive team on the field. Now, when we talk about a sense of personal pride, that's different. That's different. Um, you would hope that a quote unquote leader of men would show a certain amount of personal pride in there. But then again, we also negate the black experience in this country. Right. It's not about us having personal pride. It is about us feeding our families and surviving. And that is a very hard instinct to kick. And that is the connection between Hugh Jackson and Brian Flores. It looks different in every single situation. But ultimately, the thing that is there is that in order for you to succeed, you have to walk through the most disorganized messes and make lemons into lemonade. And if you can't do that, then you're out of here sooner rather than later. And you and you better pray. We give you a second chance in this league. And that's been the struggle for black head coaches. And that's what they're trying to unite over. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and, and you made me think of another point with in terms of Brian Flores. Uh, another thing that he's been uh that he put in a lawsuit was also the and you, again, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up with Hugh Jackson. The contract structure of African American coaches versus white coaches, like just that situation that you brought up, like yeah, that's like a it, impossible situation to succeed in. It's just not yeah. gonna happen. I mean, like honestly, if we dig, it would just be ugly. Which is why the NFL is gonna do everything to stop it. Yeah. Like, if all you gotta do is just pull on the string a little bit, and the whole thing comes apart, just a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Just a little, take something simple. Let's look at some contract structures and you will see the difference. Um, speaking of coaching, um, there have been some new coaching hires uh, in this past week, in the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, the Raiders with McDaniels, your guy, the ball with the Giants, uh, Nathaniel Hackett to the Broncos, and Matt Eberflus going to the Bears. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of those hires? I think teams don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> um, so what do you mean by that? Uh, here's what I mean. Um, none of these guys are. So I was talking about this at work. It used to be that the teams, coaches who were poached were the Super Bowl participant and definitely the Super Bowl winner, right? right? Like I'm looking at this list, I'm going, mm, outside of McDaniels, and we'll talk about McDaniels. He's a very special case. We'll talk about McDaniels in yeah. a second. Outside these, outside that, I'm just looking, I'm just like, mm, I don't see anybody that was an offensive coordinator on a Super Bowl winning team here. So again, it looks like teams are, I'm looking to try to find the coordinator that can spark their quarterback. Again, we're leaving Josh McDaniels to the side for a second. Yep. And I don't know if that has proven to be the most successful dynamic. Um, I, you know, you never know what is going to happen to the person gets the job. I know my office coordinator very well, and I am stunned that he is getting a head coaching job. Um, I heard some whispers out of Buffalo about that. I was, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, I, heard yeah I would say it has been a, if we, if, if I would give him a grade um, over this past two years, um, I would say I would give him a B. Okay. B. It's yep. a B. Um, in particular, in working with the quarterback. Yep. In developing quarterback. I'll give him a B. But that's not a head coach's job, right? right? And in terms of his management of entire offense, I would give him a C minus. I would give him a C minus. Um, the the entire structure of the way our entire offense looks is 
questionable a lot of the times. And his play calling and management of the game is questionable in a lot of times. And um, uh, specifically, uh, anyways, so um, that's just one side of the ball. We're not even talking about the defense side of the ball. We're not even talking about special teams. We're not talking about how to no, run. That's all all. We're not talking about so. Scott. We're not talking about any of those te- things. And just my instinct uh and watching it is it I I did not see him being a head coach. I, I needed to see more before I would have been ready to be like, okay, he is not. He is he is not a genius offensive mind. I will absolutely tell you that. Um, so um, Nathaniel and the other Barrett, who I don't even care who who does. I mean, I know I think teams to your point. I think teams are trying to find right. trying to it's it's that, like this one. This next they, day. they sure they're just sure. Um, hopefully something sticks. Um, and so you never know. There, I'm um, Josh McDaniels to the Raiders. This is delicious. It was delicious from every <laughs> single side that this so, could possibly. We both don't think he's a head coach. We both know he's not a head coach. Let's let's put that out, out there. Here's what I'll say: I don't have any clue what Josh McDaniels is or isn't. Here's what I do know: he torpedoed an entire franchise the last time <laughs> yes, he, he was a head coach. I mean, just totally torpedoed it. It was ridiculous. Um. Uh, him and uh, Chip Kelly. They, I've watched yes, them those two, yes. an yes. Entire, entire franchise. Yes. I was like, what is even happening here? Yes. Who allows this? Who allows their coaches <laughs> just to go crazy and hatch, hatch, just take a hatchet to great players? Um, so uh, I was uh, here's here. I, he turned down so jobs. The game turned so down jobs. There's so many levels to this. There's so many different levels to this. Um, the reason why I would say he's not a head coach is because he had a head coaching opportunity and he said, nah, I'm good. I'm going to be the offensive coordinator of the Patriots. Do I believe the job was promised to him eventually that he would be the Patriots head coach? Yep. Do I believe he now believes that Belichick will never, ever retire? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All those things are hundred percent true. All those things are equaling up. Does it make a head coach? And so I'm unclear on what will be different this time um, with him. Now, with that being said, it is a perfect match with the Raiders. It is a perfect match. That is a um, a. Uh, they have talent. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm I'm talking about the organization. Oh, you're talking about the culture. Oh, oh I got you. Yeah, the, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. They do wild things and and in uh L- in las vegas and um mcdaniels is a wild boy they like they like like once he gets total control he, he was a wild he's a wild man he's a wild right. man he's a psycho control freak um i don't know if those instincts were curbed in new england i can't imagine that they were um and then him being allowed free reign with him and his boy um from new england to go and do all the weird things that new england um uh, front offices do uh, will be a infinitely fascinating story. And here's the here's the here's where the rubber meets the road on this. You have a proven entity in the quarterback. Yep. Will Josh McDaniels bend his quote unquote proven offensive system to match what Carr? does best and will car appreciate this genius offensive mind coming in his you know third and four you know how many genius offensive minds have you seen come through them doors these past few years right um uh that will put them over the edge let me just say i'm dubious that this works out i feel very similar to how i felt about how long gruden would be there like I knew there was no way in hell. There was no way in hell he was gonna be there for all 10 years. I don't know the length of this contract, but um I can pretty much guarantee you there's no way in hell he is finishing out those other contracts. So the Raiders will yet again be paying another head coach to chill on the sidelines. Yeah, I've never been a McDaniel. I've never been a McDaniel McDaniel's nah, guy. No, nah, who can't? Um 
by the time he got by the time he got to where he was, Tom Brady was already amazing. Yes, an all time great. And yeah. Nope. Only, I mean, we look at the we got. I mean, we got to look at the, the Belichick coaching tree as far as offensively. There's one guy who I think like legitimately could coach, and that's Bill O'Brien. Because I saw what he did at Penn State, and before he destroyed Houston as a general manager, he was actually a very good coach. Just couldn't you just don't give him the keys to your team, and that was just stupid. Uh, but the the the, the Belichick offensive guys have not. They haven't been good. Other places, especially in other pro places, they just. Wait, wait, you mean Charlie Weiss wasn't successful? <laughs> Charlie Weiss. He wasn't. <laughs> no. Charlie Weiss. No? I forgot about Charlie Weiss. <laughs> Charlie but he Weiss. made Brady. Remember, he made him. Oh yeah, exactly. He right. definitely has to be successful. <laughs> How many national championships does he have? Super right. Bowls. Exactly. You know? oh, Any? Oh, oh goodness. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Uh, the devil, I, I the devil, the yeah. Giants. We are like the the Giants are the Giants. So that's like, eh, okay. Uh, the Nathaniel Hack is clearly that's clearly it. Just hoping upon hope that they get Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So that's that's where that anger comes from. Yeah. And the and the, and the Bears have no fucking clue. So it's like, sure. eh. <laughs> See, I'm these, sure there's a connection to be something that oh, yeah, I, sure, that sure, dug sure. out. He, sure. his cousins. Uh, 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 lawnmower man, and they talk football one time, and Phil loves them. I don't know, whatever. Crazy uh, yeah, thing. yeah. These, so, sure these, these are here. this is why black coaches are, are, are but just looking at that thing, I these have no clue right here. That, and why he's a head coach, I have no clue. Zero. I mean, you got Byron Lethwich, who's still out there. You got Eric, Eric B. Enemy. I guess he's just not going. He's going to be like. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, 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 what did Eric B. Enemy do? What did he do? Who did he piss be, off? Be black. <laughs> be, <laughs> That's my, what he did. My goodness. That's what he did. Because B. Enemy's been there for the beginning with Mahomes. And yes. Dable has a head coaching job. Yes. <laughs> right. <Out there. laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, man. Ain't no racist practices in the NFL? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you still have five openings. Uh, New Orleans, Minnesota, Miami, Jacksonville, Houston. Um, I think Lethwich again had a second interview with Jacksonville. Um, Houston is just, you know, with, yeah, like, I, I, sure. I, I would good. stand clear of that one. Yeah, I'm good. If I'm yeah, a I'm, I'm, I'm actually good. good. I'm, a coach candidate. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good with good. that. I'm good. I'm gonna stay where I am and see what happens next. Year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Um, good luck, and now, and now yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. That is only, straight up. Only Tyson one. You got Jacksonville and the. I mean, New Orleans has some talent, but they have they're in salary cap purgatory. There's really only one job that I would be attracted to. That Miami just looks it's toxic now. Like there's DJ. I mean, there are only 32 of them, so somebody's gonna end up taking these jobs, of course. But man, outside of Jacksonville, ooh. You know, there's uh, you know Minnesota has a couple of players. They have some talent, but ooh, and I, I guess Minnesota because if if Rogers leads that division, that division is up for grabs. So I guess but Minnesota, and then also um, wherever Aaron Rodgers goes. Right. Yes. Yep. That that's that's, the, that's yes. the wild card. Yep. That is the wild card. That instantly becomes unless he goes to a proven head coach. That instantly becomes. Um. Yeah, the hot head yeah. coaching. Yeah. But man, these jobs. Now, if you tell me BME's waiting for that, I'm good with it. But other than that, this is yeah, I, I don't get the sense he's waiting for that. That's anything. what I get mad about. Yeah. Not Hugh Jackson, not Flores. Cause I get it. And he's shining light, but my respect to Flores as a coach is different from my respect of, of Eric B. Enemy. No, B. Enemy should have had a job. It infuriates, too infuriates me. Yes, that he's not a head coach. Yes, that that's a, is a, is a joke. We're talking I mean, about racist practice. Look, that's right a racist. Yeah, that's a racist that's practice. Number one. Yes. Oh no. There, uh, there's no reason on this. There's no reason. No. There's no reason. No. And I, mean, I can't even pronounce this guy ever. I'm not even pronouncing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. So yeah. Respect yeah. him, but damn bad. I mean, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, Dan, Dan Campbell. I mean, come on, man. Dan Campbell <laughs> still got a job. Nah, we're not doing that. Dan Campbell. Nope, we're not doing that. Yep. Uh, 
Bye bye, Brady. Good riddance. No. <laughs> no. So that's fine. Say that. No, I mean, I, look, yes. Look, he yes. will get all of the accolades. He'll get yes. them all. So yes. damn that. Why well, I gotta say something nice about no, him? He you my life for 22 you years. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, like, why be nice. So I guess uh, you know, guess to no one's surprise, this happened. Um I think that the thing that I think the thing that stands out to me is where he started to where he ended. Um, I don't think I've ever seen someone in team sports who was not a physical specimen get to his reach, but reaches the higher sports. I can't think of another example. No, no. Um, because like this individual guy individual, they, he, the most dominant athlete. Yes. Like, you know, LeBron's number one pick. All most of those guys are first round picks. Even eight Alex Rodriguez, number first round number one picks. Phenom, Ken Griffey Jr. was a high school phenom. And most of these guys have are were just like you came out the crib with with, with like born for greatness in some cases. Not all, but in some cases. Michael Jordan even was a high school all American at North Carolina, went to North Carolina and so on and so on. Uh, Joe Montana went to Notre Dame, even though he was a later round pick. It's still Notre Dame, and, and Brady went to Michigan. But and, and Montana was kind; they kind of similar because they both were late round. Picks. I think Montana was fourth round. Yeah, I think Montana was a fourth round. And then and, and they're kind of similar because Montana didn't have great physical attributes either. He wasn't; he had a cannon. He just knew how to win. Yeah. Um, but Brady, what Brady did with what he had and where he started, like I said, when at the combine they said this guy he had one of the worst bodies a scout said that he had ever seen out of quarterback that's why that's di- that's the difference between him and joe montana you don't see old clips of joe montana looking like a <laughs> ragamuffin no <laughs> no no and yeah it's like you get again all the credit in the world to the work ethic through just continuously driving, pushing the envelope, you know, the TB12. Um, and again, we talked about this earlier in the podcast. Everything has to go right. Like, Mo Lewis has to deplete Drew Bledsoe. You have to get drafted by the New England Patriots. Fucking uh, Belichick has to resign from the Jets after one day. And become a Patriot head coach. Like, all that shit, uh, the tuck rule in, you know, 2001 have, has to happen. Like, so much shit has to go and right. And has to actually make that kick. Yes, Vinatieri has to make a 45-yarder in the snow. Yep, yep. There's so many things that had to go right uh, to get to this point, but you know, when that faucet turned on, and I mean, it's, it's strange with Brady's career. Like, he won early, quickly, when he wasn't. He, like, he had three different careers. Like, in the beginning, we just were like, okay, this guy's a winner. He's, he, in the beginning, he was Derek Jeter, right? Not the best player. Like, Derek Jeter was all-star, yes, but not definitely not the best player, not the best quarterback. But he was just, like, he knew how to win. Um, Wasn't putting up gaudy numbers, but, you know, did what he did as far as winning. So they go a decade without winning a Super Bowl, and then he starts to put up his numbers. And but he's but they like they like, you know what, the run is over. You go in 10 years, this is it. It's over. It's done. And then he has this third incarnation of his career where he, you know, T B twelve, Alice Guerrero he just, you know, his has again one of the longest. He and LeBron, one of the longest primes, the longest prime in the history of mankind. And you know, you have seven Super Bowls. Um, it, you know, again, it, it like I wish I, I don't want to hear about another comparing another quarterback from a standpoint of winning to what Brady has done. Just, just don't do it. If you want to compare Brady as far as the the calm and okay, he's Brady like as far as his movement in the pocket, throwing motion. You want to do that, fine. No one's going to ever even approach 
that kind of winning. It's too fucking hard. It's too hard. You have a situation where you have a all-time great coach in Andy Reid and a all-time great talent in Patrick Mahomes, and they have one Super Bowl in four years. Okay? One. And and again, nothing to sneeze at with the with the success. Nothing. You as a Kansas City fan, I would take a couple championship losses if I were being a fan, if I were being a Washington fan. I sort I would take them losses with the, with my franchise. Please give me can we get in the playoffs? Can we win a playoff game? So it's too hard to win consistently at this level uh to even like think that somebody's even going to approach it. I made a mistake with it thinking Mahomes was going to do it. Not going to happen. Um but uh yeah, this is a career that we we will never see a, a career like this ever uh from a quarterback. Uh, from a player in the NFL, period. It's just not going to happen. Like, then, too many things have to go right. And, again, again, you get, again, you get one of the, you get combined, you get, um, you combine with the greatest coach, argue, or second greatest coach, you know, Vince Lombardi is right there, of all time. That just doesn't happen. I And I was, you know, I was looking at, like, Coaches, I, I got into this rabbit hole because everybody was shitting on Andy Reid, and I was like, "Yeah, you want to blame him, but he still is second all time in playoff wins." So calm down. And then I started looking at other coaches' records, like fucking Tom Landry's only four games over five hundred. He's twenty and sixteen. Most most coaches, with the exception of Vince Lombardi and say George Seifert or Bill Walsh, they have average to mediocre playoff records. Mike Thomas eight nine. Now, of course, there's one guy who's 10 games over 500 who one of the most underrated coaches in all of sports history named uh, Joseph Gibbs who won three, who won Super Bowl with three. Nobody talking about Joseph Gibbs. Nobody talking about Joseph Gibbs. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not even, you know, talking about go that Mount Hole. That's a Mount Rushmore about. coach. But anyway, he's 17-7 in the playoffs. That's all I got to say. 17-7. Nobody. 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 <laughs> nothing to do with it at all. Nothing. But my point is, <laughs> you have all these great coaches Historically great coaches with average to mediocre playoff playoff records. Hard to win the playoffs, period. And even quarterbacks. Peyton Manning was only 13 and 10. So um there again, the Brady career will be one of those careers that they'll be talking about 80, 100 years from now, uh, that goes unmatched. And again, he deserves all the credit in the world for it. He I mean, he put he got the most and then some. He he, he overachieved, to be honest. He overachieved. Not Tiger Woods, not physicality. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Serena Williams didn't have those those classic physical gifts like that. But it just goes to show you the power of the mind. He there's nobody that has been as insanely intense and psycho psychotic about winning and driven as very few as Tom Brady. Now. I wanted to ask you something about because I have a distinction mm-hmm. with we talk about, yep. Yep. We Go ahead, talk about greatest football player of all time versus mm-hmm. greatest quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's undoubtedly the greatest quarterback of all time. I myself separate the positions when I talk about greatest football player of all time. That's my personal opinion. Mr. Mike Mine. You know, I got everything. No, say. go ahead. No, let's go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. So I have to start at the beginning. I I have lived every single solitary second of this man's career. Every single yep. solitary second. I remember when he, I remember, I remember everything. I remember everything. I'm, I was there for everything. Um. So as you know, I was at that first Super Bowl. Yep. Um, so uh, uh, here's what I'll say. I'll take you through my exact thought process on Brady from start to finish. Um. The first iteration of Brady, when he first came into the league, um, I could not. This this is the genesis of my hate for the Patriots. And I actually do separate Brady and the Patriots. And that's an important distinction right now. Um, I could not understand how they were winning. I, it, it, it baffled me for three years. I could not understand how they were winning. Um, uh, and... Um, and that was the first three effing Super Bowls. I couldn't understand what was going on. Um, and at, I, mean, I say that, like, I remember, so that's, that's, that's the first part. Um, the, the, 
the absolute stunning talent I was seeing with Peyton Manning versus what I was seeing with Tom Brady did not make sense to me. Um, and so that's the first three. Then um, it becomes clear that uh, that Brady is a machine, that he's just a machine um, that will never, ever stop throwing that damn football and making you lose over and over again. And then you start, then that's when the legend of Brady really started to build because um, after the first three Super Bowl, after the first fucking three Super Bowl, I can't believe I'm even saying that. <laughs> after the first three yep, Super Bowls. Three or four Bowls, years, back to back. Um, after, yeah, yeah. At those first three Super Bowls, um, the, the thing that I remember thinking is everything is icing on the cake from this point in time. He was a walk-in Hall of Famer at that point in time. Um, and everything else was icing on the cake. And he was a psycho competitor. Then this third stretch happened. And this third stretch just cemented um, not only the competitiveness, the separation between him and Peyton Manning, um, but also the skill and what I did not know, the reason why I say I, what I did not understand at the time that I definitely understood and understand now is that he was every bit the equal of Peyton Manning mentally. That was the part I didn't understand. He's every bit of the equal of him mentally. And then there's that next level stuff. And I always separate the two like this. And Peyton Manning is my favorite football player of all time, by the yes, way. Yes, we both love him. Um, and so, um, you, know, my, you know, I have love for my football team, but in terms of like a player that I love yeah. to watch, Peyton Manning is yeah. the guy. But I separate them like this. Um, there's this show on the NFL Network that comes on after every Super Bowl win where they recap, they have football players recap the championship run, whatever it's called. Um, and Peyton Manning is in one of the ones, I think it was the, yeah, it was the first Colts one. Um, they they were doing this thing and they and they interviewed the players and he's one of the players walking us through the season and they say to and they ask him the question or he even I think he even gives this up voluntarily he's done this in several interviews since um, so he's not ashamed of saying this he was like everybody was saying we want New England he was like no I didn't want New England I wanted Oakland I wanted to get into the Super Bowl the easiest way possible that's the difference between Peyton Manning and Brady would never say that Brady, no Brady not never say it Brady wants the best the all pro team yep. everywhere yep. and he still wants to beat them and he'll be pissed and yep. he'll try to beat them again and again and that's again that's that tiger woods yep. that's that tiger crazy. prime tiger woods yep. exactly and that is that's the definition now i'm going to get to your level your that next level question is brady the best football player of all time he absolutely is and it's not even close and i'll tell you why because no one matches his competitive will and his drive. I love Jim Brown. I love the Walter Paytons. I love all of the all of the ones that everybody would hold up and hand out. Tom Brady will stand the test of time simply because he was the most competitive son of a bitch that has ever lived. Jazz ever lived. There, right. there. He has that next level greatness that is. Um, that is, and I'm sick to my stomach doing this, so please don't interrupt me. Um, he's the next level greatness that um, that is very hard to quantify. That's why it's called the intangible. And the only three, the only other two or three, I'll put Serena, I'll put Jordan, I'll put um, I'll put uh, 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 Serena Jordan and Tiger, Tiger right? Um, in, in that, just where it's just like it's it's psychotic. Russell, Russell too, yeah. You can't understand, of course, of course. We, we can go through a list, but I'm just talking about the three that come to mind that I personally saw. saw right, um, right. And so, and so that that is this. That's the thing that you can't ever do. That now, what separates him? Absolutely, and what makes him the greatest football players these last two years? Um, to move from one franchise, which you've been in from twenty. And in one year, one year, one year, one year, take another team to the Super Bowl is unprecedented. You have six already with one team. You have seven Super Bowls. He has seven Super Bowls. Tom Brady is a walking, winning franchise. There is no other player in the history of the NFL that can even remotely say anything like that. 
at what what is not given enough credit and this will absolutely stand the test of time and nobody will be able to touch this um it is ridiculous seven super bowls seven super bowls is worth like 20 freaking in a nba championship oh, yeah. it, easy. it doesn't even easy. make sense yeah easy. it doesn't even make sense easy. seven super bowls is ridiculous like like it's it's so out of control yep. out of the realm of any possible thought process anybody could ever have um that uh it can never get enough credit no nope. it it cannot happen it is it is singularly impossible what he did and again that is what separates him from every nfl player that has ever um that has ever played and then on top of that he plays in the most visible position it is simply amazing. And I give him and Derek Jeter these, this compliment. It is simply amazing that you make it through your entire career and there is no big, huge scandal to hold over your heads. Yes, there's the play game. Yes, there's the fuck that. We know what that means yep. um, in, terms of, in terms of what, like, brain, everything like that, whatever. That, like, in order to do that. And um, again, the last two seasons, particularly like that first one, but it goes with the second one. Um, people came to Tampa Bay because of him. Yeah. Because of him. Yeah. That is not something that has ever been done in football. That has ever been done. Let's go assemble this thing over here and win a championship. That's never been done. No. That's never been done. No. And so um, for all those reasons, Brady is the greatest yada, yada, yada. Now, I do have to say this. I have to make my, my opinions on this very, very clear. Um, I do not hate Brady. I hate the Patriots. I hate them. I hate them with a passion. Brady, I do not hate with a passion. Um, I respect, I can say, Brady beat me into submission and into a depression as a football fan, and I begrudgingly respect that because that is the very definition of greatness. When you leave no answer, no anything, no court, no nothing. His case is airtight. It's yep. the most airtight case I have ever seen. All the wins, all the records, all the th- all the things, all the things. Who does that? Who walks away with all the things? And then the final thing that has been pointed out very, very much, when he said goodbye to the game, he led the league in passing. He led the league in touchdowns. He had an amazing um uh, uh qb pers- uh, um qbr right there was no slippage in play and so that's you just you can't every I mean, box. And this- it is essentially like i said i watched the perfect game when i watched the bills play the patriots i've never seen anything like that i have seen the perfect career with brady it is the perfect career there is nothing else that can be said or done and that is also Nothing that any other NFL player can can claim. No, even even the losses in the Super Bowl. You're talking about losing when you almost go. You had to kill him. You had to kill him. You had to kill him. Yeah, you had to kill him. You know, every for, single loss in those Super Bowls was nail biter tight, yeah. and crazy, insane thing. You know, fumble while he's gonna drive, and you know all the things, all the things. Oh, you had to kill him dead. You had to kill him dead. How yeah. dare you, Seahawks, throw that ball? Still yeah. Okay. I have no problem with the argument as far as greatest football player of all time. I still, to me, pound for pound, who I saw with my own eyes, growing, especially growing up in the New Jersey area, saw that Lawrence Taylor was the best, the greatest that I has ever seen. And I Lawrence like, Taylor had too many character deficiencies. Most talented, yes. Great talent player, he had too many character deficiencies. That's part of it, real. We can't we can't compartmentalize things. That's part of being the greatest of all time. You're out drink. You're proud of being drunk during a game. That's a great story. It's an amazing story. That ain't this. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's fair. No. That's fair. No. You're right. You're right. Because you, you know what? Because that that twelve year career could have been maybe fifteen. Oh, years ago. Yeah. If yeah. you took it seriously. Stop. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. No. I had. You know what? You're absolutely right. It should have been a fifteen, sixteen career. Yeah. You're right. You have yeah. to take it all. That we talk. We we got to take everything. You got to Yeah, we split the airs. You got to compensate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, from, that, from that standpoint, I, I, I would have to even put somebody like Jerry Rice or Jim yeah. over. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Rice is the best argument. Yep. He is the greatest wide receiver of all time, and it's not even close. No. 
No, that's not yeah. yeah. It's not even close. And the winning and the records in terms of the records he has in his possession, yeah. Yeah. He's the he's the he's the best argument. Yeah. He is. Yeah, yeah, Rice, yeah, Rice, and then you know, you got somebody but like Brady's Rice. overall win. It takes, but Brady, out. yeah, Brady's totality and the longevity and the, like, yeah, like you said, no, there was never no slippage. Was, like, there's no, there's zero slippage. Like, he went out on top in essence. He went out, you know, um, yeah, that last iteration and those three, those last, <laughs> those last, uh, you know, four super, yeah, last four because. I mean, right, in his career on the Raiders, breaking his catch streak, not having to catch in in the game. Tom Brady's two in MVP voting at the least. Yeah, yeah. You just can't compare these things. No, he is. He's just that great. He no. just got to give it up. He is. You just no. can't. There's no comparison. There's no comparison for him. There is. I mean, no. I mean, when you look at athletes in general, it's like, yeah. I mean, they all. You have to go to other sports. Yeah, you got to. You transcend it. You're the greatest. Yeah, tra- yeah. Like, you have, yeah. Like, you have to. You have to go to other sports to find. Comparison. I mean, the only the, the only comparison from a team sport wise would be Russell, with the MVPs yeah. and the going yeah. out on top yeah. and things of that. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. To your point, you know, eleven championships, but seven Super Bowls is the, like you said the equivalent of that. Like, it's just hard, exactly. much harder to win. It, it legitimately makes no sense. It legitimately yeah. makes yeah. those seven Super Bowls. I, how about this? Yeah. I'll say this: in all my years of playing Madden, I in in a in a span of a of a of the game, like a twenty twenty one or twenty two, you know, whatever the year is, I never won seven championships on the game. <laughs> I never won seven championships on the game. That's insane. I would not. I don't. I, I didn't. I wouldn't have had the focus to right. do that seven yep. times. Yep. Who can do that? Yeah. No one can. No. Except him. Crazy no. person. No, no. That's Crazy psycho yeah. competitor. And I'm so very, very happy to retire. I, <laughs> I'm so very, very happy. I legitimately started to believe this day would never come. This makes me so happy. <laughs> this makes me so happy. I I want to live in a world where I'm not afraid of Tom Brady. And yep. I'm finally living in that world. And I'm yep. very satisfied to be there. Very satisfied. All right, real or not, Patrick Mahomes wins only one Super Bowl. Uh, I listened to a bunch of Kansas City stuff. And yep. fans put it perfectly. Um, he was like, the worst thing about this loss is that this team will never be considered a dynasty. Uh, he was like, even if we win it next year, this group, like that, that group won't be considered a dynasty. So here's what I'll say. I see a world where the Chiefs reload, rebuild, and um, in Patrick Mahomes, not waning years, but as he, the scary thing about Mahomes, right, is that he he's he's not even at his apex yet. No, he's 26. Not, he's 26. He's Keep that mind. So, 26. So probably a little bit later in his apex, kind of like at the Aaron Rodgers. You know how Aaron Rodgers won the Super Bowl early and yep. now – complete control of his powers hopefully Mahomes won't go crazy like Aaron Rodgers did um but but when he's in I I think when he's complete control of powers and a hit on a draft a hit and free you know like one of those years where they can reload yeah. and stop, can can he get back absolutely absolutely so um there is a world where I see Patrick Mahomes with two or three Super Bowls I I, I do not think I it would be absolutely insane and foolish for me to think that Patrick Mahomes is not a player in this for a very long time. It will be, you know, it will, will be all the things that the Peyton Mannings and the Aaron Rodgers and all of them, the Dan Marine, not Dan Marine, um, the John Elways <laughs> and um, the Kellys were, where they were just, you win. You, you're in it all the time. Yep. So, as painful as the losses will be, and there will be painful losses. You will, at the very least, be in it all the time, have a chance to to win. Um, and especially as long as Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes together, um, you know, say what you will about what happened that game, but they are who they are, and they yep. know who they are, and I respect that. I do respect that. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, they they will they will innovate. I felt like they needed an off season. They will innovate. Yeah. They will be back. There, there's yeah. no doubt in my mind on that. They're, they're fine. They'll I'm adjust. Fine. They'll so, adjust. So, so over under one Super Bowl, I'm taking the over. I Two agree. I'm yeah. taking. I'm taking the over. Um, 
I listen. You're a Kansas City fan. I'm sure you. But not dynasty. Not dynastic. That yeah. them days. Is done. Yeah, we're not. We're not doing three, four, five. No, no. That's that's just not happening. Um, they just, let the rest of the league catch up. Not yeah, only the, yeah. like defensive concept wise, but talent wise in the AFC. Well, no, it's 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 so much. Yeah, it's talent it is also psychologically they let them catch up. If they won it this year, um, yeah, if they would have won it this year. Or even if they win it last year and come back this year and lose in the AFC Championship or something like that, that's one thing. But we've seen you now go back to back years not winning it. It's like, no, you we know you're talented and we know you're great, but you're you're gettable. Like And you're gettable. what makes this so challenging for Kansas City Chiefs fans and what's different from that game that you referenced with the New England Patriots is Kansas City was on an ascent then. Yes. They're going the wrong way now. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't look ascending. It looks like man, Kelsey's gonna be thirty two, you know, um, and other That's players. Got, uh, and the honey out, badger, honey out, badger, out, yep. be doing all these things. You know, all yep. these different things have to happen, and um, and the mat we maxed out the AFC Championship game, right? Yep. So it's like it's like it's it's different than maxing out at the Super Bowl. I can say that from very hard earned pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's different to max out the Super Bowl. Yeah. It sucks to max out the Super Bowl, but there is still a hopefulness that is there. You feel really good about your chances when you max out the Super Bowl, whether they are ridiculous or not. You just feel really good. When you max out the AFC Championship, there's no feel really good about your chances. You just, it just sucks. It just sucks. And you're sad. And you hope you can get back there again next year. <laughs> that, that is literally what losing it in the AFC Championship game is like. And so there's no real big silver line. Unless you were unexpected, unless you're like the bang was unexpected to be there. Um, but other than that, there's no silver line outside of that. And so I think that's the other devastating thing about that loss is that it's a loss that marks the descent, not the ascent. Yeah, I mean, the moves on them as far as their philosophical adjustment um, in, front, in terms of what they do next. Uh, they have 20 free agents. Um, and, they I mean, they're dealing with the same shit that every team deals with. They're going to turn over the roster 30 to 40%. That's yep. every NFL franchise. Yep. And eventually you got to pay the cost for having three of the highest paid players at their positions, period. Mm -hmm. So that's life in the NFL. Um, mm -hmm. They are top heavy, but that is, you know, well, that's, that's why, why you, you got to take business, take care of business. Care of business when, yep, when it's your turn. Yep. When you it's your turn. Um, when that thing shuts, boy, does it shut. And you no. think in your mind, oh, we're going to, nah, homie, 20 years later, 20 years later, making the playoffs <laughs> again. That, um, door, that door closed. Who does it close? I was thinking about this. Um, we, so a couple of things we had out are, uh, we're going to do next week all Super Bowl predictions and breakdowns. And so that's normally we do this part of the program where we preview next week. Of course, there is no next week. So next week we will break down the game and the keep the matchups. And, you know, we'll have a I'll have a week to digest the matchup. I still haven't even digested yet. I really haven't even thought, thought about the Super Bowl that much, to be honest with you. Nah, um, it's too early, bad. too early, too early. It's like you know, it's like Thanksgiving meals. Things have to get cooked, and you know, you don't you don't eat right away. At least not, at least not in my house. You don't eat right away. Um, yeah, who eats right away? <laughs> Whose house does that? Oh, I mean, I listen. I'm saying some people that to eat that that's eating at noon and one o'clock. Wow. Trust me. Yeah, wow. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eat I, those people. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I know we not even seven eight at night. <laughs> Yo, which is late. Oh, no, no, <laughs> That's true. Our house. <laughs> yeah, had... You learn very early on. Eat a big breakfast. Yes, yes. <laughs> you think you think you're gonna set yourself up for pain, just hunger pain for hours. Keep you won't the... let you eat anything. Keep the snacks handy. Get yeah. some snacks. Get those snacks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I couldn't help but the, the, for one lat for one NBA point, man. I because I just can't. The, the Lakers and Nets just are like the gift that keeps on giving. 
Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we've done the Lakers. We, I got to go back to the Nets. And I was thinking about the Nets um, in regards to their situation. And I'm thinking about those players, the three, the, you know, the big three, Durant, Harden, and Kyrie. And, of course, I don't think they're going to win a championship this year. I just don't see it. I don't even care. Even if they get healthy, I just I cannot foresee them winning the championship. Just the energy, I just can't see it. Like now, I might be, I could be, you know, a couple months from now, I could be getting laughed at from a standpoint. Oh, you really didn't think the next could win it? It's not even about the talent. It's just like I, I've seen this movie before. I just don't. I, I absolutely don't see it. Okay, putting that aside, these three players absolutely deserve each other. They really do. They really deserve each other. Um, the latest thing, and I don't know if you heard about this, James Harden complaining to the NBA about the officiating and actually going to a point to where he's t- sending, like, footage saying, hey, uh, you need to look at this with the with the referees and so on and so on. And I'm like, yeah, really? He's not enjoying the shoe on the other foot. He's not yeah, exactly, exactly. The yeah, there the, ain't no fun when the rabbits got the gun. The officials like, okay. Uh, poor James. Poor James. Yeah, poor James. Poor James. James. You only you only get into the line like eight times a game. Poor James. Poor you. I know. I know. You don't get every call anymore. And I'm like, I'm just looking. I'm just it like I'm, look, I'm like y'all three deserve each other. Y'all deserve this. Y'all, you. I mean, you deserve each other. Like it's in a real real way um yeah it, it's it's i mean it's been it's been fa- like uh, like uh, we both like i mean i i can speak for myself we both like fa- we are fascinated with train wrecks in sports like the, the like and you you were i know for sure you were you were uh rooting for the train wreck of my old four lakers uh yeah. when that happened you could yeah. you, you enjoyed oh. the hell out uh, of that. oh it's one of my favorite finals ever of any sport ever i love it <laughs> I love, it. I love, it. I love that finally. That, you know, and, you know exactly how I felt about that. And this, you know, even though you know they aren't, well, I mean, I guess the talent is about the same considering where they are, or maybe we a little bit better because Kobe and Shaq in their primes. But I mean, similar situations where you have all this talent and all these pieces and all these expectations, but just a whole bunch of chaos and a whole bunch of like. A whole bunch of reasons why this team is not going to win a championship, and why probably more than likely somebody like Milwaukee or Phoenix will. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I just can't. Again, I wish Durant, you know, is healthy. You know, gets back healthy. Enjoy watching him play basketball. He's all time great, no question about it. But I'm saying I can't move for Kyrie, man. I can't move for Kyrie and Harden. I can't. I it, like it, it. I can't. I can't do it. it. It's just like you can't. How, like how can you, even as a basketball fan, even if you were, even as a casual observer, and you, you're perfect. You're, 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 you're perfect t- uh, case, uh, test case because you really don't have a, a, a specific, specific team. But you, don't you find that team impossible to root for? for. Hello. No. Yeah. Hello. Oh, all right. Yep. Yeah, I think we lost. see. That's how bad the that's that's how bad the chemistry is. We we actually lost uh, SAP. Um, we just gonna wrap it up there. Yeah, we are gonna wrap it up there with the real deal podcast. No, I was just thinking just thinking about the Nets. Um, that um. They they're impossible to root for, and again, there's no way that team is it, they're not winning a championship. It's too much bad karma, too much bad uh, energy. And again, if you want, like I said, you want to watch a team, you want to watch an NBA champion. If they stay healthy, watch the Phoenix Suns. Watch what the Phoenix Suns are doing. Uh, watch you know, watch the the continuity, watch the chemistry, watch they're on a mission. That is a championship caliber team. That is a championship caliber. Uh, foundation that they have. I know they had the stuff with Sarver. That's kind of went away in the last couple of months. That team is loaded and locked in on on their goal. So, um, but again, 
we're going to get back to uh, the Real Deal podcast. Come next week with the uh, with the NFL show. We'll preview. We'll do a complete breakdown of the Super Bowl game. Enjoy the rest of the evening. The podcast will be up later on tonight, early this morning. So long.